the good things that you can do on the Worker, what's it like trying to survive in San Francisco? So let me say that I'm, I'm kind of a tech worker. I'm a reporter for TechCrunch, uh, which is a technology media outlet partly based in San Francisco. And what's your name? Greg Ferenstein. And Greg, what is it like trying to survive in San Francisco as a tech worker or a reporter on the tech industry? I think uh, rents are, you know, rents are very high. Everything is very expensive. It's 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 not easy for sure. You know, but don't get me wrong. I'm not complaining. I mean, a lot of people have it a lot worse than me. And you know, the situation of reporters, independent contractors, freelancers, is this a, an issue as far as the ability to live decently or have a decent life? Well, I mean, look, I, for, for the first three years of my career, I basically worked for free and I slept on a floor. Um, that's the nature of the industry. Um, and there's not a good way to, to monetize content. So it's something the industry needs to figure out or there won't be one. And are there a lot of people in your situation? in the industry? Well, so I'm a staff writer now, so I have it a little bit better, but previously, oh yeah, I think the average freelancer, I think, makes something like $20,000 a year, and for me that was probably a good year. And how do you survive in San Francisco on that? Well, you have another job, and I didn't live in San Francisco. I mean, you moved to the East Bay, but even that's getting difficult now. No, I mean, I, it's, it, it, is, it is not easy to do. Um, I wish I understood the solutions. I'm not an economist. Um, I don't know if a minimum wage works. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how to save it. You have to save a dying industry, uh, and that will take some very smart thinking. And gentrification, it seems like a lot of people here, working class, poor people, even people who are making decent money are not able to live in the inner Bay Area anymore. Uh, that's again. I'm. I mean, I, I. I came here a year ago, so I'm probably part of that process. Um, but I didn't know. I was just looking for a house, and it opened up. Um, a lot of it, I. I think is just unintentional. Like I literally, I moved into San Francisco. It took me three months to find a place. Something opened up, and then I learned about all this in, in the new neighborhood. And there, as you say, there are tech workers here who are struggling themselves. Oh yeah. Uh, at the same time, there are people who are making a lot of money here. Uh, do you think that contradiction is going to grow? I think inequality generally uh, is going to grow indefinitely because technology inherently creates inequality. The question is whether technology can also create prosperity for some of the people at the lower end of the income distribution. My hope is it does. Well, it, was, it used to be said that technology would free people up. You have a shorter work week. It would make things better for the majority of people. You're saying that that really is not the case. Oh no, that's that's completely false. Uh, technology, we will be working, I think, longer hours and, and more, and we will be making less. The question is, if we have more stuff, we have washers and better cancer treatments and more leisure time when we need it. Um, and so, in some cases, technology raises the prosperity level, but in other cases, it greatly widens inequality, and you just have to you just have to choose what you want more. Well, isn't that going to create a social crisis if more and more people are marginalized as a result of technology? Not necessarily. You don't see any great problems with that? Well, I don't see any problems with inequality inherently. I see problems with a lack of prosperity and a lack of things that people need to make their life good.